What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Season 7 NHL 24 Minnesota Wild Franchise Mode Series. As always, guys, thank you so much for supporting the last episode. If you can leave a thumbs up on this one as well, I'd really appreciate it. Now, as you guys can see, Boone Jenner here. We signed him for agency. Somehow our leading score. He's got nine points in six games. If you guys missed the last episode, I'd always say this, but really, I would go and watch that one before this. As you can see there, we actually finally won a Stanley Cup. Minnesota Wild's first ever Stanley Cup. I think our team was pretty stacked. Finally got lucky in the playoffs, Sam. So very happy about that. We still have a couple years left here to try and win one more. And I do think this team has the potential to actually go back to back here. So I'll show you guys what the roster is looking like. First line there, you got Matthew Boldy playing with Robert Thomas and Kaprizov. I feel like Boldy played a lot better on the left side. I'm hoping Kaprizov as well will do better on the right. I think Thomas too being a really good playmaker is going to help them both. Second line here, you got the young gun line, Damodov, Hagens, and Iserman. Third line is Jacobson make his NHL debut with Boone Jenner and Tiji Ginla. Jacobson's a very good playmaker. Ginla's got a good shot, so hopefully they play well together. And the fourth line is pretty solid too. Charlie Stromel, Svechkov, and Height. Defensively here, you got Hughes, Sider top pair, which is just outstanding. Faber Schaefer second pair. Faber's back up and rating a little bit. 89 has the send it zone ability. And then the bomb pair, Soderstrom kind of came out of nowhere. 81 overall was a fourth round pick for us 2026 alongside Willander there was 81. So overall defense is good. Gold tank, of course, we got Daigle who won the Vezda last year. Definitely got robbed of the Calder Trophy behind him. Trey Augustine who never even planned on having, which kind of lucked into him. Power play one, you can see is pretty stacked. Hagen should end up being a 90 by the end of the season. I thought last year would have hit it. Since he didn't, I feel like this year he definitely should. Second power play as well, even though no chemistry boost looks solid. Four man power play one and two are both really good. Again, we kind of have like the older players on the first units, the younger guys on the second. PK, Boone Jenner's solid. Stramel's really good. Svechkov's got insane face off stat there at 92. Even Height, I think, has like 88 D awareness. And we got Hagen's Thomas there on the third unit. So overall, I think this is one of the more solid teams we've ever had. I think, too, in terms of like the team depth, Every single player is getting special team time somewhere, like uh, the entire fourth line plus Jenner, the PK shutdown dudes, everyone else is on a power play. Looking at the AHL team here, you got Ogren now down there playing with Luke Misa and Yurov. Hopefully they do well as that first line. And we signed Brad Lambert there. You can see mostly mid to high 70s, couple 60s. Defensively, they're led by Galchenyuk, who's an 80. I uh, got Swift here. We just drafted 79, medium late. We also got an 80 overall. Medium late sniper. Had a pretty insane first round considering we just won the Stanley Cup. Ivankovic, their 8th row for all starting goalie in the AHL, is also kind of ridiculous. And because we lost Eric Sinek, had to make a change to the captaincy. Caprizo there, slowing an A, favor of C. And then Quinn Hughes there actually gave the other A too. A lot of people wanted him to be the captain. Obviously being the former Canucks captain, so does make sense. Our best defenseman. I think actually highest rate player on this team, as you guys would to see. So in terms of the ratings, we've got 100 offense, 92 defense, 89 goaltending. I think we have a pretty solid squad. Let's see if they can go back to back. Also, too, guys, looking at contract extensions here, we got 6.8 million in the cap space right now. In terms of our extension space, we got 15. Boldy wants 10.3. A one year does not get any cheaper. Obviously, I don't want to lose Matthew Boldy, 90 overall, top line player. Let's see if he would do like 9 million bucks, give us a bit of a deal, which usually you have a better chance of getting deals at the beginning of the season. Jenner's probably just going to be a one year thing. Schaefer here, 85 overall, wants 5 million. Honestly, for what he gives us, I don't even know if it's worth it. Height here is fourth line, 825k. Definitely get him locked up for that. Stramel here, he wants 2.9. Kind of expensive, I think, for fourth line. Like next year, we're actually going to be tight against the cap. Uh, Augustine here needs a new contract. He wants less than a million. We'll do that in a one year. Dale coming off of Vesna wants 7 million bucks. I mean, let's try to do a bridge here, 5 million. At this point, we actually have like no money left to keep Schaefer, so. I think him and Stromel will probably be lost, but I feel like we have enough depth that we can uh, make up for those losses. Also, to Ivankovic here, he has one year left. There's a chance, you know, could call him up and maybe trade Augustine. I don't think I'll be trading Daigle, although you never know with me. If I see the right uh, move, I'm always down to make it. And there we go, guys. Daigle said yes. So I think that's a nice bridge deal there for the 22-year-old Vezina Trophy winner. Still waiting to hear back from Boldy. Jacobson, the rookie, actually ended up being the preseason scoring leader, 10.7 games. That is awesome to see. So that third line, him, Jenner, and Ginla, Apparently playing well. Ivankovic said yes. Height too. Both those guys signed for League Min. Boldy said yes. 9 million bucks I think was good. Augustine was like just under a million. So yeah, very happy with all those extensions. All right, guys. So it's the end of December. We got a record here. 19, 14, and 3. Not too bad. Not amazing. Currently third in the division. We're tied with the Blackhawks, but they have games in hand. Only two back of the Stars. Can't complain. I think this team could be playing even better. AHL team. Kind of surprising me here. 18, 6, and 2. First place in the division based on point percentage. We'll see 
who's their scoring leader. It's Yurov, over a point per game. Let's go. NHL-wise, Kaprizov, 42-36. and 36. I think he had over a point per game at this point last episode, but he tapered off a bit. Hopefully this time we can keep it up. And so we're down the trade deadline here with a record of 31-23-7, which is good for third place in the division. Two back there, the Avs. Blackhawks are now in first place. AHL team here. 35 11 and 4 they're still first place in their division so maybe this is the year the AHL team finally wins a Calder Cup Europe averaging over a point per game NHL wise Caprizo averaging over a point per game too so we have like what six and a half million in cap space I believe definitely could add here as long as it makes sense for us might as well definitely only looking for a rental since we're already losing guys for next year Dylan Gunther one year left I mean could probably fit him in somewhere Vince Dunn same thing you got Rensky there new hook Jack Drury Connor Zary up to an 87 Logan Cooley only got to 87. 25, though, still growing. Groshev, Hironic, Tomasino. Okay, so some options here for sure. And out of curiosity, guys, I was checking Daigle stats. As you can see here, only has a 901. I don't know how he went from winning the Vezina to this, especially. I feel like our defense is just as good. Augustine, though, putting up really nice numbers. Also, too, I noticed the player we have in junior right now, Kwong, 84 overall. And now I was trying to make a trade happen for Vince Dunn, guys. Then I realized he has extension there at 9.2 million. So it says we'll be overly maximum salary cap for next year. They do have McElroy here, 2187. Defensive defenseman, five star defense, five star physical. He's making entry level for another season after this. I could try the offer for him. I doubt it'll go through because he's on the block. But it was going to be Schaefer in a first because we probably can't afford to bring back Schaefer. There's only two seasons left anyway. So rental's not the worst thing. But actually, now this trade would be awesome for us trades rejected i mean at this point though i would definitely uh, actually consider adding something else they want a couple of medium league goalies okay might as well trade the one that's one year older one overall less still rejected quite far off i feel like yeah i probably gotta pass on that all right guys so instead of trying to make a trade here with the arizona coyotes to get logan cooley if we do this boone jenner is probably our fourth line center so we'll be stacked down the middle he's got 36 points these two games he's averaging about a point every other game two way forward there solid defensive stats good skater Kind of just like an all-around guy, young, offering up first-round pick. Koprova was the main league goal. He almost just gave up. The Valley's pretty equal. They want both things. Clues on the block. Trades rejected. Okay. Why is the trade value bar even there at this point? It does not seem to be very accurate. Throw in a Sharks third. And they say yes. Okay, so Cooley coming in is big. Honestly, might still do one more move. Uh, we'll see what's out there. Not so much on the block, just more so... Uh, looking at players and now the next trade I was looking at making guys was actually Ivan Demidov He's three overall higher than Irishman making two and a half million dollars more thing is Irishman's producing just as much if not better uh, Taylor Radish here Stenberg Siegel and Dumont. That's really not a lot. This might be a pretty good trade for us top six potential What's his overall 85 power forward is actually just what I was looking for seven goals 20 assists Stenberg has been a bit of an AHL star 17 goals 31 assists. Uh, I mean can the AHL team live without him? The other two guys, they're unsigned. I would actually do this. Let me see if there's somebody similar value here to Stenberg they would take back. So another guy's below him, I really want to trade. Either they're in the NHL or they're like a good AHL player. Now Hendricks here, technically above him, kind of tied. 14 goals, 4 assists in the AHL. We could probably live without him. Again, I don't think he's doing as much as Stenberg. Taylor Radish is a nice player here. We're getting back. I'm going to say yes to this. I assume, yeah, they're going to say yes. The one thing I was going to say, guys, is the fact that I was actually thinking about maybe trading Demidov. And even though he's three overall more, he's actually putting up less points, playing on the same line. 16 goals, 23 assists. eisman has got one less goal, two more assists. But again, he's making $2.5 million less. He's actually lower overall, so he could jump where Demidov could fall. I was going to try and make a trade. I was looking at maybe like a Cutter Gauthier. I think I was maybe looking at like Roger McQueen, one of those guys. But um, unfortunately, it doesn't really look like they have enough time. Although... I mean, the Ducks, there's 10 minutes here. I was looking at a Gauthier one for one. He's three overall less, but he's a power forward. He's making like 900k less. This kind of gives us, I don't know, a bit of a different variety. Maybe I ask for like a third round pick here as well. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what the Ducks say. Trades accepted. Okay. Wow. Two minutes left. Some people might not like that one, but I was just thinking, save a little bit of money. And honestly, Gauthier could be third line for us next year when we actually call up that guy who's currently in junior already 84 overall the sniper so kind of looking ahead here taylor radish as well we got a couple of power forwards coming in of course we added logan cooley as well so i think yeah forward group here definitely got a lot better and as i said that accidentally clicked a i don't know what i was thinking i was just too focused on my trades but luckily we got the blockbuster alerts thomasino going to the rangers Siegenthal, a couple second and a third go to nashville you've also got connor zary there and luke tuck going to tampa bay philip peronic Going to Calgary, the fourth and the fifth. Pretty big deals. LA gets Alex Newhook there. Montreal, a couple prospects. And a second, Ryan Donato on waivers. 
Definitely in a decline. We've already got more than enough guys. And since I messed up, guys, let me just double check here. Player and pick trading. So see what else I missed. Morgan Geeky there. The Vegas Gold Knights. Riker Evans to the Blues. Andrew Peak to the Bruins. I feel like a lot of this we did see at the Blockbusters. Justin Barron there to Vegas. Dante Fabro to Vegas as well. Dougie Hamilton to the Blackhawks. Tomasino moved. Alex Turcotte to the Oilers. And I think that's pretty much it. Tristan Lennox to the Leafs. So after the deadline, guys, I'll give you an updated look at the team. I feel like forward group is looking kind of nasty now. First line have not touched. It's still Holdy, Thomas, and Kaprizov getting that plus five. Second line gets a plus five now as well. It's actually Iserman, Cooley, and Hagans. I thought it was going to be Gauthier, but uh, we got the better cam this way. Third line, you got Jacobson, Gauthier, and Ginla. So Gauthier actually slots into 3C. Next season could be on the wing, could be playing second line. Fourth line here is looking nasty. Jenner, Stramel, and Radish. Like, come on. It's got to be best fourth line in hockey. It does suck ice time allocation for us to only roll three lines. I feel like these guys could definitely use, you know, the extra minutes. But we're only going to have them until the end of the season anyways. Defensively, no change. In terms of, like, power play and stuff like that, I don't think I touched any of the power play ones. But uh, Gothi is sliding into power play too. Sam Cooley. I think as well, Cooley's on the first PK. So, like, he's actually going to be a big player for us. Gothi there as well. Unfortunately, of course, Cooley is expiring. But... It helps us make a Stanley Stanley Cup run, try and go back to back. I'm very happy with those deals. AHL wise, really didn't lose too much. So hopefully this team can continue to dominate. All right, guys, it's so on the end of the season. We finished the record there. 42, 30, and 10. Pretty solid. Second place in the division. The Blackhawks actually won it. AHL team here. 45, 18, and 5. 95 points. Had them finishing second place in the AHL. Only the Roadrunners there doing better. So I think actually there's a couple games left. They could end up winning the league. You're off 75 and 68. Love seeing that. NHL wise, Caprice up one point shy of a point per game. I think I've been saying for the last, you know, five episodes. I just want him to hit a point per game, and of course I get trolled, and he falls one short, but still, not bad. Quinn Hughes, what a season for him. He had 81 points as well as a defenseman, 11 goals there, 70 assists. That's unreal. I think he's got a chance here to actually take the Norris from McCarr, stop him from winning seven straight. Robert Thomas at 75, Boldy 66, Eisman Higgins, both 56, Cooley 52. Take a look and see with us, point per game basically. Okay, I think that second line, him, Eisman, Higgins. You might have to try and find a way to keep Cooley. Aginla put up 50 points at 83. Luckily extended at League Min. He's definitely jumping in rating. Gothi there also at 51. Faber was close. I think it did make sense for us to trade away Hudson. We just had too many defensemen that could reduce. Like, side of there only put up 30. Uh, Jacobson, 29. He's an 81. I could see him jumping a little bit. The rest of the guys really weren't expecting too much production from Daigle finished with a 903, Augustine a 909. So we'll see if Daigle can do a little bit better here in the playoffs. Ivankovic in the AHL, 908. Let's see behind Yurov. You had Lorenz there, 71. Ogren, 67. So producing a lot more than he did in NHL. Misa, Stenberg, both in the 60s. And look at this, guys. Yurov was actually the second leading scorer in the AHL. And again, there's a couple games left. So there's a chance he could actually finish number one if he has, you know, two really good games. NHL wide, David again, 105, followed by Marner, McKinnon, Dreisaddle. Matthews there at 61. You got Pasta, Ranson, Eichel, Will Eklund top of the page. Uh, next year, goals is McDavid, 66. Defensive scoring. I think Hughes is going to take home the Norris. He had three less points than McCarr, but a much, much better plus minus. McCarr's a minus six. Hughes there plus 37. They got to give it to him. I feel like if there's ever a year he can take it from McCarr, it's this one. Clark had a very good season as well. Nikishin, you know, continue to be up there. Zane Parekh actually uh, pretty high up there. Cool to see. Some different players. Goaltending wise, Devin Levi, 42 wins. Looking at save percentage here for a starter. It's Jeremy Swayman, a 9-2. Still at the Boston Bruins. That's right. I think they end up trading away Linus Olmark instead of him. And then goals against is Demko. So really not sure which goalie will be in the Vezo this season. Kenneth Tripchura here, Flames player, 45 points plus 8. Probably taking on the Calder. Jacobson was 6th in scoring for rookies. It's not terrible. And look at the entire league here, guys. The Bruins win the President's Trophy, 118. Where did we finish? We had 18 with 100 plus. That's kind of nuts. I don't think I've ever seen like, you know, 10 or anything. We were 13th there, 94. Definitely a solid season. As get screwed. They finished 15th, but they don't get in. Montreal at 21 does. Atlantic no longer that great. Winnipeg last place, 58 points. Obviously, they were selling last year. Trade us Perfetti. I think I saw Ehlers was on the block. They also trade away Shifley, I believe. Buffalo there, first in goals four. We were actually sixth though, which isn't too bad. And then goals against Boston was the best. We're not at the bottom or the top. So goals against wasn't as good this year. We didn't have, you know, a Vesna season from Daigle. But still, pretty happy with how the guys play. Looks like we're actually playing St. Louis here in round one. So definitely helps the fact we took away their best player in Robert Thomas. Uh, we'll see what actually the rest of that roster is looking like. Don't believe we've actually matched up with them yet in the playoffs. So 
They got Brandon Castles, Marco Rossi. That's right, trade him in the Robert Thomas trade. Jordan Cairo, Lecker Mackey has only traded them. Kind of crazy. These two guys are making up, you know, a third of their top six. Dvorsky, Buchnevich, Birdchild there. Okay, the Jake Neighbors in the fourth line. Snuggerud. Defensively here, not the best. Like, no one bad. They got they got good depth. Everyone's like 84 to 86. Hofer starting. They've also got this Mulder guy, 86. Medium Lee Potential had a 9-4-2 in 19 games. This guy's kind of a beast. I might be starting him. We'll see what happens here. I feel like definitely pretty good team. Definitely a bit of a rivalry matchup. You know, them having two of our former star players in Rossi and Lecker Mackey. Game one at home, 4-2 win. Game two is a loss, 4-3. Headed St. Louis now. It's all tied up 1-1. They get the game three wins. It's a close one. They also win game four. I mean, the only good news is all three losses were one goal losses. So, like, we're in every game. Game five, have to win. And we do. 4-1. Game six, Kemi Force game seven. And we do, three nothing win, okay. The boys wake up, let's see what happens. Game seven at home, first period. And three two for them. You got Mikhaev, Rossi of course, Castles, and then Hagen's Azerman for us. That second line's playing well. Four to two, Castles again. I'm just gonna send the whole period. We have to, we need a big period here, guys. And, oh, we get it, we get it. Seven to five win, are you kidding me? Eisman pulls within one, then Bucinavich makes it 5-3, and then Cooley 5-4, Jenner 5-5, Favors 6-5 us, and Aginla there with the empty netter. What a third period comeback. I know Shelby was saying I probably should have, like, you know, resumed simulation, but who knows, who knows. If I did that, it might not have worked, just assuming the whole thing. We come back. I honestly was just assuming we were going to be first round exit here again. What a comeback there from the team. And we got the Blackhawks now in round two, facing... None other than Conor Bedard. Eisman, 9.7 games. I think since trading away Demidov, he's been playing better. Maybe just like less guys, you know, trying to hog the puck, whatever it is. It's been working. So I will take a look here next at the Blackhawks. You got Kershaw to an 89, playing Bedard is a 94. And Nazar, you got Bergstrand there, Moore, Reichel. I mean, even the bottom six is solid defensively. Ferraro's the number one, 87. Korchinski's only an 85. Jones there, Vlasic. Mayu, Rinzel, so kind of like Blues, a lot of depth, but they definitely have a bit better defenseman. And Drainov there, 89 overall goalie, plus they had 84 backup there in Guyon. So definitely a better team, which is why they won the division. So here you go, guys. First two games are in Chicago, the Windy City, 3-2 OT loss. Still, though, it's a close game, 5-3 loss. I'm just, there's no way this happens, right? 5-1 win, 5-4 OT win. I was going to say, no way we get swept. We actually tie it up there. Game 5 now in Chicago. And we have the momentum, 3-1 win. Let's go. Can we do it in six? We cannot. So game seven in Chicago. So far, it's been a pretty close series. Like the only, you know, decisive game was game three. They won five to one. Everything else has been a one goal game except for five, three loss. There was a two goal. So here we go, guys. Game seven in Chicago. Can we shut down Bedard and move on to conference final? Down one early. Oliver Moore. Second period. Two, two. Let's go. Bedard actually gets them the two goal lead. Then Boldy again, la, tie it up. I mean, I could have sit the whole period. It worked for us last time. Maybe I should have. Nazer there. Power play goal, 3-2. to two. Oh, man. Shots there, pretty even. About half of the third. Brock Faber, the captain. Quinn Hughes immediately after. Let's go. 4-3. to three. Are we just a comeback team? Five minutes to go, Kaprizov. 5-3. to three. What? This team loves game sevens. They love the comeback. That is so awesome. And now, guys, in the conference final, we got the Vegas Golden Knights. So this should be a pretty good test. Quinn Hughes there, over a point per game, current playoff scoring leader. I know Vegas doesn't have Mark Stone. I think they still have Janik Eichel, though. Take a look here at that squad. Perfetti sign there. Sheriff, 95. His first overall, 2024. That's right above uh, Celebrini, Eichel. Morgan Geeky, 81. Second line, though, is definitely an interesting choice. Brendan Brisson, Barbashev, Hurdle still there, Dragachensev. Okay, they got an 85 Kling cell. Second round pick, 2025, not bad. Defensively, they got Sam Dickinson leading the way. The Tass Tonga guys, 88. Korsak, 85. Hannafin still there, 86. Just signed a big contract, real life. Baron Fabro. They've actually got really good defensive uh, depth as well. I'm noticing that with a lot of the teams. Gustin, their starter, of course. <laughs> it's like every matchup almost we've had to, you know, face uh, old players trying to get revenge. So. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we can get better than the Vegas Golden Knights. I noticed they were 8-3 so far in the playoffs, so they've been pretty dominant. Game 1 here. We're up 2-1. Bribershev opens the scoring, but Kaprizov at Higgins answer back. After 2, it's still 2-1. to one. 
And we hold on. 3-2. Hurdle tied it up. And then Logan Cooley shorthanded. Let's go. That's why he's playing power play and PK. The dude's got the speed. He's got the hands. He can do it all for us. So, I mean, I'm feeling pretty good here. Up one. That was an away win, two in Vegas. One of the toughest arenas to win in, in the league. Game two here. Up 3-2. We actually scored the first three. But they pulled close there end of the period. Second period again. No scoring. All right. 7-2. This team loves the thirds. Eisenman Kaprizov again the bully. Just a definitive win. 7-2. That's a statement. Headed back to the state of hockey. Looking for potential sweep. Game three now at home. Can we do it? First period. Up 2-0. Boldy, Kaprizov. Both power play goals. 4-2. Gauthier, Stromel, Barbashev, Eichel for them. We actually had four straight goals. 30-18 shots. And we hold on 6-4. Kaprizov, Raj with the empty netter. Perfetti there. Uh, of course, scoring on his old team, although he only did play for us, what, 19 regular season games plus a playoff run, but still, definitely helped lead us to a Stanley Cup, and, and we're now one game away from back-to-back -back Stanley Cup Finals, just have to win one of the next four. Here we go, guys. 1-1 one, one after one, Barbashev, Eisenman, 2-1, two Ginla, 2-2, two, two. hurdle there, we need an OT hero, and we get one, Logan Cooley, what a trade deadline acquisition, the guy's just been all world for us, that is awesome, we get the sweep, in the conference final and now we're just looking for our Stanley Cup opponent and we got the Buffalo Sabres who of course won back-to-back -back Stanley Cup before we beat the Red Wings last year to kind of stop their run they're looking for their third and four years Gothi as well from the trade deadline he's got 2018 so really liking those moves we made so far they are paying off take a look at that Sabres team I mean we kind of already know a bit what they look like because I took a look after they went back-to-back -back, and the top six hasn't changed Benson, Cousins, Quinn, Tuck, Savoy, Thompson, Paterka on the third, Kulich, and Rosen. They're literally just keeping the players they had, and they've just grown really well for them. Greenway, Wahlberg, and Fonderk. I have no idea how to say this guy's name, I'm not going to lie. On the fourth line, defensively, they still have Dalene there, Jerichek, Roy, Power, Benoit, LeMay, goaltending. They got Levi starting, Len in there, backing them up. So, Buffalo's a good team. They've obviously been here before. They won back-to-back. -back. It's our time, though. We're going to try and do what they did two and three seasons ago. We got the home ice advantage. Let's get it done, guys. Sorry, this is actually in Buffalo. My bad. We don't have the home advantage. Greenway scores one. Thomas answers back. Four to two. Not what we want to see, but we're a big third period team. Can we have another comeback? Five to three there. All right. So not what we wanted to see from game one, but at least it was close. As I mentioned, too, I got it messed up. The first two games were actually in Buffalo. So if we can go one and one, I would not be, you know, too upset with that. They're 13 and eight. So actually pretty, you know, similar record to us so far in these playoffs. After period one, Matt Roy there scores shorthanded. Come on. Two to one. Savoy, Sider answered back. We're only down by one. And Soderstrom there ties it up. Let's go. Bottom pairing D-man. We have another hero. And we do. Kaprizov. Let's go. I've seen all the comments. People saying I got to trade him. I got to trade him. Well, that was a big goal. We'll see if we can make another one. Help us on this run. So game three, we're back home. Let's keep the momentum going here. And 0-0 zero, zero after one. After two, it's two to one. Hughes, Kaprizov again. Coolidge for them. And after three, we got the win. Logan Cooley there, insurance goal. Let's go. 2 1 series lead now on this potential dynasty team in Buffalo Sabres. If we can go up 3 to 1, I'd be feeling really good. Here we go, guys. Game four, still at home. And after one, it's 1 1. Shaver for us, Wahlberg for them. After two, for some reason, guys like to score in the second period. And 3 to 2, we hold on. We actually outshot them 43 to 24. They had the lead, and then Boldy answered back like 30 seconds later. Jacobson there, game winner. Let's go. 3-1 series lead, Stanley Cup final. All we have to do is win one of these next three games, and we're back-to-back -back champs. I'm trying to think if I've won back-to-back -back cups in NHL 24. I don't think I have. I definitely have to like you know go and check, but let's go, guys. We are one win away from uh, greatness. Got three games to do it. And in Buffalo, 2-2. They scored the first two. Irishman and Ginla answered back. We will not be denied. 3-2. to two. All right, let's see. Can we have another nasty third period? We are out shooting them again. So we got the pressure. Savoy there shorthanded. Boldy, though. 30 seconds later, power play goal. Okay, we're within one. Tuck there. Every time I see, like, a goal. Robert Thomas, five seconds later. We are hanging around here. We only need one to tie this. Force OT. They have a power play. We kill it. Five minutes left. We have a power play. Come on. Come on. <laughs> two minutes to go. One minute. Oh, Tage Thompson, their empty netter. All right, so unfortunately, could not get it done game five. Luckily, still have two more chances. Here we go, guys. Game six at home. Obviously, I believe we won our first Stanley Cup away in Hockey Town. It would be pretty cool to win it in Minnesota. And we're down too early. Quinn and Rosen. 
Second period, still 2 nothing. Come on, boys, find a way. There we go, Cutter Gauthier pulls us within one. We're hanging around. The team wants it, it's just gonna be tough. This Buffalo team has been here. Starting to actually outshoot them. We're getting a lot more shots here in the third. Five minutes to go. Still just need one here, force OT. Oh, man, okay, so Buffalo is making us work for it. Head to game seven. All right, guys, one game separates us from greatness. A lot of good teams in the Stanley Cup. Only great teams go back to back. I think the Tampa Bay Lightning, Pittsburgh Penguins, Detroit Red Wings. Can we do it? Buffalo here. We're in Buffalo. First period. <laughs> They're up one. Okay, the guy's name I cannot pronounce. Second period. We need a big second for once. I mean, Robert Thomas. That's all we needed. We needed to tie it up. We do. One period left. Power play. Five on three. There we go. Caprizo. I was going to say you got to capitalize. Let's go. 15 minutes. Zach Benson ties it up. Road shooting them right now. About uh, 10 shots more than them. 2-2, two, two, halfway through the period. Power play again. Can we capitalize? We cannot. Five minutes to go here. Matthew Boldy. Matthew boldy has been so clutch. Obviously, last year, insane playoff. We have one and a half minutes left here, guys. I'm not going to take control this time. Obviously, only up one. We have to let the Sim decide. Let's see. We got 192.89. I'm curious how that matches up with them. They've also got 184 defense, though. 91 gold tending. So... They got eight worse defense, couple better goaltending. I mean, I'm sure the Buffalo crowd be going crazy here if this ever happened. We got a one goal lead. Obviously, we've been a big, you know, comeback team this entire series. We got the comeback here. Only one, but still, Game 7 Stanley Cup, a one goal deficit. That's a big comeback. 30 seconds to go now. They pulled the goalie. Can we do it? Bort side there, Boldy. He, of course, currently has the game winner. Back to Sider to Kaprizov, and that's going to be it. 20 seconds left in the empty netter. 20 seconds to go here, guys. Up two now. Feeling a lot more comfortable. I was really worried the Buffalo team might, you know, tie it up. Thomas there. They're still pushing. Our team's not just puck rig. And we're trying to get another. Cousins on it. They still didn't pull the goalie. They haven't had good enough possession. There they go. Seven seconds. There's just no way. Even if they get one here. Big save from Day. Let's going to cover the puck up. Two seconds left. We're winning back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. How awesome is that? 2-1. There you have it, guys. Minnesota Wild, back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champs. This team was stacked top to bottom. Honestly, I didn't think it was going to happen. I feel like we definitely gave ourselves the best shot to do it, especially that deadline. I think bringing in Logan Cooley was huge for us. Kind of a controversial trade. Demoed up for Gothe, but it worked out. Even Taylor Radish just, you know, beefing up that fourth line. And the team got it done, especially being a powerhouse in the Buffalo Sabres. Definitely well deserved. And look at that, guys. Cutter Gothe. Speaking of controversial trades, he actually wins us the con Smythe. So, you know, the fans might not have been too happy. Demidov was our, you know, first big pick in that 2024 draft. But I feel like Eisman kind of took his spot. Gothe brought a different element for us. Helped give ourselves, you know, really solid top three lines. Obviously showed it there in the playoffs winning the con Smythe. And next year, guys, you have Brock Faber going out to lift the Stanley Cup in back-to-back -back years. Pretty crazy, too. I saw everyone saying, strip the C from Faber. Well... He just led us to back-to-back -back cups, so definitely was the right move to just leave the C on him. I think sometimes you get unlucky, you can't blow it up too much. You just got to be patient, hope luck goes your way, and that's exactly what happened. Now, Boone Jenner, I don't think he's ever won a Stanley Cup at this point. He's a vet. Let's give it to him. I think real life, he'd be the kind of guy that gets it, especially someone, you know, playing your bottom six, your PK, playing hard. Well-deserved, uh, you know, lifting that Stanley Cup finally for him. And now next year, guys, I'm trying to think who we give it to. I feel like Capriza, Thomas, they all got it last time. Maybe Gothia, honestly. Like, Conn Smythe Trophy winner, the trade. I don't really think, like, we have any other vets on the team. And now finally here, guys, who are we going to give it to? Uh, we actually don't have Daigle as an option. Could we give it to the backup goalie? You know what? Let's give it to Higgins. I think, like I said last time, we did Daigle, Capriza, Thomas. I want to do three new players. Obviously, Hagen's our first overall pick. If we don't win him, do we win these two back-to-back -back cups? I don't know. He really made, you know, our top six feel that a lot better. Hasn't really turned into the superstar, I would have hoped, but he has been a very, very good player. And that's kind of all you can ask from him, even being a first overall pick. And then finally here, guys, you got the famous Stanley Cup pick. It does kind of suck. Both years we won it away, but still, I would take, you know, seven away cups opposed to just one home cup. So... Definitely very, very happy. You can see Kaprizov right there in the middle. And never gets old, guys. Minnesota Wild Stanley Cup champion. And now next year, guys, of course, it's going to show all the names on that Stanley Cup. Again, I do like the fact pretty much everyone on this team is a real player except for 
I don't know if Ludwig Soderstrom yet, but every single other player on this team is, what I think is pretty cool. I feel like just having real players makes it a lot more fun, makes it a lot more, I guess, realistic, you could say. So, cool saying all the names. Daigle there, game seven, at a 9.38 save percentage. So, he came up huge for us. Definitely back to back cuffs. I'm holding on to him. And then Kaprizov, talking about him not showing up. He had two goals there, game seven. So, yeah, well deserved. And now, next year, guys, we'll take a look at the AHL team. Hopefully, they win a first round exit again. And okay, they were not. It looks like they beat Milwaukee there first round before losing to Texas in round two. So, I mean, it's still not ideal. After winning their division, you'd expect them probably to get a little bit further in the second round. But I'm a little bit more concerned with the Stanley Cup than the Calder Cup. Maybe in the final year, we'll find a way we can stack that AHL team. So, Minnesota Wild Stanley Cup champs, Calder Cup champs, Texas Stars. I feel like, you know, Texas actually is taking our AHL team quite a bit. But. Honestly, guys, so, so happy. Arizona there jumps from 3-1. to one. I did kind of feel bad. Last year, we had their fourth overall pick, so at least they get to make up for it now with that first overall. And next year, guys, take a look at retired player screen. John Tavares, free agent, was down to 73. Lone Couture there. How old was he? 41. Jeff Skinner. Couture, yay. Jeff Skinner was actually still on Buffalo, but he was in the AHL team, being a 74. Trocek. Taylor Hall, back in New Jersey. Who's Netsov, Marchesso, Palmieri. I mean, you got a lot of good names there. Taking a look at goalies, Freddie Anderson, Jacob Markstrom, Grubauer. And look at this, guys. Robert Thomas was actually a playoff scoring leader. He was a point per game. Gauthier, I think, just had more goals, which must have been why he won the Conn Smythe. Um, actually, never mind. He had one less goal, but he was a plus 11. So I think they just like the fact he had a really good plus minus because that's kind of what this game, honestly, uh, usually goes with when it's, like, you know, close like that. Quinn Hughes, almost a point per game as a D-man. You probably could have given it to him. Same amount of points playing defense. I mean, go with the, you, know, you can't take it away from him, but looking at all these stats, you probably go Quinn Hughes. He also didn't take a penalty the entire playoffs. Quinn Hughes was the Consumite Trophy winner. I think uh, the voters definitely messed that one up. Boldy there, 23. Kaprizov, 21. We had 14 goals. Eisman Hagen's there at 19. Definitely, I yeah, cannot complain. Goal tending here. Dagla, 9-2-1, 2.5. Definitely showed up for us. And as you got to take a look at the playoff tree, so obviously our road to it was pretty tough. Like, seven games there with the Blues and the Blackhawks. Of course, swept the Vegas School Knights, and then another seven games with the Buffalo Sabres. Buffalo there went through the Leafs in seven, Bruins in seven, Sens in six, us in seven. So they were one game shy there playing the maximum of playoff games you can. Looking at the awards here, back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champ, Minnesota Wild looked pretty good. Kind of crazy, too. You got Buffalo winning back-to-back -back right below us. Um, after that, of course, you got President's Trophy, Boston Bruins. Got the back-to-back -back Clarence's Campbell. I didn't even realize, I somehow just noticed this, the Avs won the Clarence's Campbell three years in a row, they made the Stanley Cup final, and they lost all three years. They lost to Toronto, then Buffalo, then Buffalo. They're like the Buffalo Bills of the NHL. That is crazy. Individual awards here, McDavid with the Art Ross Trophy, Marner with the heart. We're obviously looking for that Quinn Hughes, James Norris, and he does get it. Okay, so even though he got robbed with the Conn Smythe, the voters at least gave him the James Norris Trophy, McDavid, Lady Bing, Chip Chura there at the Calder, Gauthier, Conn Smythe, Demko got the Vesna. Swayman so though got the Liam Jennings, Peak Bill Masterton, Canucks coach Jack Adams, Carlson Selkie, Marner Ted Lindsay, and then McDavid, Maurice Richard. I feel like we probably should have won the Jack Adams at one point in this sim, but it's all right. Calder Cup there was the Texas Stars. As I mentioned, we did win our division at least. Individually here, just looking to see anyone I recognize. Most of the guys that are going to be made up. Herbal though did win the best goalie. Robot out there, MVP of the playoffs. You got Olsen there, community involvement in Montembeau, lowest goals against. And next year, guys, before we enter the draft, I want to take a look at the contract situation. I see we have 5,000 in cap space, so uh, a little bit more than we had last year. Almost double what we had last year. I think we had 3,000. So Logan Cooley doesn't want an extension, even though he played so well with us. 7.9 million asking price is actually really reasonable. Unfortunately, I just don't know how we could get him to fit in. Again, there's up to an 85. Schaefer's a guy. I'm probably going to trade because he wants 5.12. We do have 5.5 in extension dollars, but... I think we just have a lot of defensemen coming up. Radish definitely letting go. Same with Boone Jenner. Goalies, of course, they're all locked up. Goalies, of course, are locked up. I just realized we're actually saving money on Augustine, which is nice. I mean, Cooley, we could try extending. 5.5 for 5. He wants 7.9. There's almost no way he says yes, but you guys know. I'm just 100% of the shots you don't take. And so entering the draft here now, guys, we'll take a look and see who's Arizona going to get. I hope for them they do get, like, a franchise guy, at least a high elite. And look at that. you got a Swedish player there. Christian Olas, medium franchise, gem. So glad our scouts can point that out. Uh, four meme leads there behind him. Other, oh my gosh, look at these gems. You got a guaranteed meme league goalie. Gonna go like end of the second, early third. Guaranteed meme league goalie though, like fourth or fifth. So we'll worry more about him probably. Zach Korea here. I'm a huge fan of Paul Korea. He was my favorite player as a kid. I'd say it's like him, Eisman, Lidstrom. I just love the Mighty Ducks movies and cartoons. So gonna try and see if we can maybe snag Zach Korea there from the Kingston Frontenacs. 
Guaranteed melee potential. Let's take a look. Kobayashi could be uh, lane there as well. Could be. He's going to go a lot later. And wow, look at this. You got a couple medium top six guaranteed. You go like third, fourth round. And we've got like four third round picks. You got Roberto Davies there as well. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we'll definitely be getting some really good value in this uh, final draft. Also, a medium top four defenseman, 153. Let's go. And now next we're going to trade with Matthew Schaefer. As I mentioned, solid defenseman, 85 overall, but I really don't want to pay him 5 million bucks based on kind of what he gives us. I'm also trading Will Ander with him just because we have a lot of young guys coming up. I think can replace him slightly cheaper than Jenner just being moved there because at the deadline, you have more cap than you should. Trying to get this Kochi guy, Kosi, I'm not sure. Uh, 23 years old, 83 overall, medium elite, defensive defenseman, 19th overall pick, 2025. Very good defensive and physical stats. I think he could be a really good player, especially if he grows this summer. $3.2 million, I think, obviously, it's very reasonable. We're saving about $2 million bucks on the Schaefer deal, but he's got the lead potential, better defensively. Plus, we're trading away Willander. I think this is a good deal for us. We'll see what the Devils say. Trades reject. Value on the table was too far off. Now, I might go back to the Devils defenseman, guys. At first, I want to try and get McElroy here from the Kraken. I was trying to get him at the deadline. 21 years old, ASN overall, lead potential. Also defensive defenseman, just kind of further along. Um, one year left there, entry level. It does show, doesn't fit our coaching scheme, which isn't ideal, but I think, you know, he's better rated. So if they would do this trade, I added Augustine in. I think it's worth it. Edwards just there for the roster spot. Trades rejected. Okay, so maybe we try this deal for the Devils guy. Again, I'm really hoping, because he has elite potential to actually grow this summer. Also, too, he does fit all PK lines, which is nice to see. And I gotta throw Boone Jenner in there just for the salary. At this point, value is way on our side. The devil still say no, but they said you're a bit off in value. So we're really close here. Again, we're just kind of banking on that elite potential of going up a bunch. Honestly, might as well hold on to these, all those picks. We'll actually be making them. I didn't realize we have two thirds there in a the draft. We're not even gonna be in. Uh, we'll try on a sixth round pick here. And they say yes. So hopefully that move was right for us obviously give a lot of capital i figured two augustine deserves a chance to try and start and actually gotta try to trade a second and a third of the lightning for their second moving up 21 spots they say no i mean i'm trying to think we do have all those extra thirds next year what about we just do the ducks third which probably be worth more they say yes okay so honestly not really a smart move necessarily i'm just doing that to try and get the korea guy i want and as you can see, it's still available. He's a gem. There's a guaranteed medium top six. Banting here, three on HL ETA. I think that's the same as Korea's. Let's see. And 64 overall medium top six, not too bad. You look at the first round. His oldest there was 82. Ellington, Tuminen, both 80. Same with Anglin. Rally is 79. Looks to be just medium elites in that top five. And I'm assuming our next pick here, guys. 64, last pick in the second round. There's a chance. Okay, we could take a medium late goalie. Or we could trade back. I mean, honestly, might as well take the goalie. Next closest guy for us is like 110 here, McBain. So we'll take uh, Dakota Hill. And he's a 48 overall, medium elite, not bad. And our next pick here, guys, end of the third round, number 91. We'll go with Jackson McBain here. Guaranteed medium top six. 58 overall, could be higher rated, but not terrible. And we now have the last pick of the third round. You got a Nicholas Cronwall. Oh man, I'm tempted to take him forward there. NHLTA five years, probably medium top nine. I want to, but it just doesn't make sense. I think with this next one, next to go would be Lane, it looks like. He could be a medium elite, Xavier Lane from Oshawa. And he's a 57 medium top six. All right, so not as good as I hoped. And now next you guys make a trade the Boston Bruins. I feel like it's a pretty good offer. Signing rights to Taylor Radish plus a seventh rounder to move up four spots. This is just to make sure we get a guaranteed medium top six. who's going to go like 125. And we had, I think, the 128th pick. So I didn't want to risk it. I'm talking about Alvin patch here i probably butchered that name but he's a gem 49 overall medium top six he's actually a grinder okay and we now have the last pick in the fifth round guys number 160 and we're getting the guaranteed medium top four defenseman here in helmerson from sweden 47 overall but still medium top four at this point it's very very good value and with our last pick in the sixth round i'm gonna try this sergey voinov guy supposed to be low elite it was like three or four bars i hate how i have to scroll every time for the last pick and he is low elite wow okay that was actually an awesome pick basically a seventh rounder and our last pick of the draft, guys, is the last pick of the draft, Mr. Irrelevant. Let's see if we can actually land somebody sick here. I'm all out of pins, so we'd have to really look. I mean, if this guy's a medium top six defenseman, that's not that bad. Could get a guaranteed low top four. That's also pretty decent for, like, the last pick in the draft. Sorting it by potentially got one guy here who's got, like, a small chance to be medium elite. I think I'd rather just take Nicholas Nielsen here. Guaranteed low top four. Like I said, last pick, that's actually pretty good. 58 overall looked like. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this draft. I feel like... We got some really good pieces that we could use uh, trades next year, even this summer. And we actually have to resign our head coach here, guys. Coming off back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. What's he asking for? 
He's only asking for four and a half million. I feel like that's actually pretty reasonable. I thought he was gonna ask for a lot more, to be honest. And as you predicted, guys, Logan Cooley, they rejected the contract offer. We still do have the resign phase to try and make something happen. I'm wondering, so we got 3.6 million in cap space. We actually lost cap space, but I guess that makes sense because Schaefer was on entry level and then we got that guy back, 3.2. What I'm thinking is for next year, um, that's our top four. Then we'll have Soderstrom and I'm hoping Swift here will grow as he's right-handed, he can play with Soderstrom. Unfortunately, like Galchenyuk and uh, Siniston here, we're supposed to be like the duo. 78, they're 80, like they're kind of decent, but other guys on the team are just better. So they'll probably just be like the duo for the top HL pair. And like I said, Estrada here will be the AHL backup goalie. Take one more chance here, Logan Cooley. He's asking for 7.3, we got 3.6. Yeah, there's just no way. Was a really good player for us, like Perfetti. Unfortunately, have to let him go. Luckily, we got the Consumite Trophy winner coming back in Cutter Gauthier. We can actually afford to bring back Stramel now. 2.3 for one year. If he says yes to like, I don't know, we'll try two right on. We'll probably have to end up paying him like two and a quarter, at which point we'll have no money, but honestly, we'll have an entire team basically locked up. So uh, should be set to try and <laughs> three-peat, which would be absolutely ridiculous. And there we go, guys. Our head coach is coming back, which is awesome. Again, he's won back-to-back selling cups for us. Now, Shamel, they rejected the contract offer. Like I said, we'll probably have to pay him about two and a quarter. And aside from him, honestly, I think it was just like all AHL players because we already like did most of the work. So try 2.25 wow stramel again rejects a lot from an extra 50k because he was on the stanley cup winning team still rejects oh man you know what he is really good like physical and defensively how much does he really look in here 2.6 and there we go okay so leaves us with 1.8 million in cap space but like i said the team like we have all of our forwards i'm really just hoping you know some of the guys grow defensively as well really just swift here i'm hoping at least becomes like an 80 that way i can plug him into that bottom pair other than that, team is set. And so we'll check for agency here, guys. Again, don't really have much money to spend, but curious to see what players are available. But Tagli at 94 overall. Dylan Gunther there. Interesting. Arizona could not resign him. Kind of tough. They're getting the first overall pick, losing one of their best players. Castles there. Obviously, there's some good amount of made up guys here. But still a ton of like high rated players. Logan Cooley, of course, love to bring back, but we do not have that 7.5 mil. In terms of goaltenders and Drainov here, but Chicago has him as an RFA, so. I'll probably bring him back. Two-way goalies, Ravensburg in 2380, medium starter. What? How is, he could be our AHL starter. I don't know how this guy's available. We'll do a max deal there, two years. See what he says. And there's a couple low elite skaters available. As always, try and sign them. If they go somewhere else, that's fine. But basically just free value for us. Callum Ritchie here, 2578, medium top six. Might as well give him an offer too. I feel like could use him in the AHL. I want to say we lost at least a few players. And I'm looking for an AHL all-star, guys. Jordan Gustafson here apparently has a five-star shot. That thing looks nuts. He's also got 90 passing. He's a 26-year-old, 79 overall, two-way forward. I don't know how he got that good. He's done growing after one year. But, I mean, I guess two-year deal in case, you know, he does tear it up. On a Vinan, 97 shot power defensive defenseman. Uh, we actually are probably good on defense. Jacob Perot, 80 overall sniper. Also, it's pretty ridiculous offensive stats. I'll sign Perot here as well. It's a two-year deal. Again, we haven't won a Calder Cup yet. That's basically all I'm thinking. Can we get one? And right here, guys, look at affordable players sorted by defensive stats. Ryhard's Grebo is available. 82, 93 D awareness is ridiculous. The physical is only three stars. We've got the five-star defense. Also, this guy here on Edmonton, Krevchenko. Two overall lower, but he's cheaper. He's a grinder. 89 D awareness, 91 shot block, stick check, 5 star physical, he's really slow. He could be a beast though on the 4th line. He's got elite potential as well, I just realized. What's our max? Like 1.8 or something? I'll offer the guy 1.75 on a 1 year. No picks, I'm assuming Edmonton matches, but might as well try. And now next you got time to get trade the Boston Bruins, offering up Brad Lambert, who's done growing, but I'm also giving them 2 low top 6 forwards. They're actually like not that bad, but obviously with 1 year left, like they're not going to have time to do anything. Try and get a couple picks here, which, which is a lot more flexible in trades. Obviously, they don't have, you know, contracts or salary. They say no. I mean, I would honestly, yeah, third round pick there. That way, too, make sure we have enough spots for all those guys we just made offers on. Washington, third and sixth for Belmare. I mean, I think a medium top four should end up having more value. Rycroft said yes. So, one of the AHL guys, same with Lundin. I think those were actually the two low elites. Two fourths for Wu and a third seems kind of like a dumb offer from the Flames. Perot said yes. Same with Richie. So, again, Trying to help with the HL team, Ravensbergen, 80 overall, very solid. Gustin there could be an absolute beast. Kravchenko accepted as of now. We'll see whether or not Oilers match. And now the Oilers did match the offer. I kind of figured they would. We could still try and get Griva though. And actually, guys, they found another potential fourth line player. He might be better than Griva. Eriksson here on the Flames, 82 overall. Defense there is three and a half stars. Physical is four and a half. It's all super solid though. It's like mid to high 80s. I'm just thinking Riley Heights got 88 defense awareness for us, but. 
Um, other than that, like, he doesn't really have the best, you know, physical or whatever. So, this guy could be a bit better. If he says no, Grivo's stats, honestly, weren't even that amazing. Except for the author as of now. Obviously, Flames have a chance to match. Just trying to steal all of uh, Alberta's players. Decide they're not willing to match. Oh, wow. We get him for a third round pick. I think that's a pretty good, honestly, pickup. And now this sucks, guys. Stenberg, who was like a good AHL player for us. I purposely, you know, took him out of that one trade. Offered 1.285 by the Blues. I apparently don't have the money to match, even though we really would. It's just kind of like a glitch in the game where it doesn't let you match if you're going to move into AHL. So, unfortunately, we're going to lose him. Lucas Peterson as well, we're going to match. Oh my gosh. I guess it serves me right. I'm giving out all these offer sheets and now having players stolen away. And as you guys are making one small move, that's trying to sign Jake Furlong here to the AHL defense. I noticed we could still use one more guy, so league main contract. All right, guys, so that's our next season. I'll show you what the team is looking like. I think there's a chance we could actually three-peat here. Back to back to back, Stanley Cup champs. So, First line, keeping the same, Matthew Boldy, Robert Thomas, Kaprizov, getting that plus five. We now have Kwong here on the second line, up to an 86. Elite potential there, you can see his shots, pretty nasty. Hopefully here, just playing with Hagen's Gothay, they'll feed him the puck. Gothay, even though he's a power forward, has got 95 passing, Hagen's there is 94. So, uh, we'll see if that works out, they get plus three chem. Jacobson's up to an 84, did lose his X-Factors, but still higher rated. Playing with Eisenman there in the middle, and Ginla on the right wing. Eisenman, although he's not a center, has 81 face-offs. Pretty good strength, 89. Good balance, I think. Could be a sentiment there on that third line. Then finally, fourth line, Height, Stramel, and Erickson. Defensively here, we got Hughes Sider, of course, on the top pair. Faber and Swift's now the second pair. Swift here, I was hoping it would just be like an 80-81. He actually grew to 86. He's on the second pair now over this Kochi guy. Soderstrom's playing with him. They get a minus two. If it was Kochi on the second pair like I planned, it would actually be good chemistry. But I think Swift's too high rated there, 86, to play on the bottom pair. Goaltending wise, of course, Daigle starting. Ivankovic backing him up. Defensively, Ravensbergen starting 80 overall. Bopit there, 79 is his backup. You look at the team, you got the Gustin guy signed first line. Svechkov here is in the middle. I was looking at his stats. Honestly, apart from like his faceoff stat being 92, defensively and physically, not that great. So I feel like the other guy just made more sense. He does have insane balance at 98, which is interesting. Uh, Perot there as well on that first line. Yurov, Misa, Ogren. That was actually our first line last year. They did well. So top six should be solid. Uh, look at everyone here. We have a 66 apart from him. They're all good. Defensively, Galchenyuk, Sinistin, still our top pair, getting plus four. I then have Healy and Furlong on the second pair, both 79s, and then Wu and Masters on the bottom pair. So I think AHL team, you know, if a couple of those guys we brought in play well, could have a chance at that Calder Cup. But for the next episode, guys, I will show you what our ratings are looking like. Accidentally simmed game one there against the Avs. 3-2 shootout loss, but right here I'll show you our ratings against the Blackhawks. So, we've got 100 offense, 94 defense, 88 goaltending. If you guys are wondering where's Bedard, it's because it's preseason. He's probably down in the AHL, they're trying other guys. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see if we can go back to back to back for the three-peat in the final episode. If you guys enjoyed this one, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.